What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey, my name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around at the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Port Charlotte PAC Pack 01 2011. Stick around. So we're looking at a Port Charlotte today. I've got their PAC 01 2011. This one is part of their cask exploration series and they have a couple of these available right now. The other one I think is called OLC 01. That one should be a sherry finish, but what we've got here is a red wine finish. More specifically, red wine casks from the Gironde left bank area, which is part of the Bordeaux region or north of Bordeaux, which of course is a region that you wine drinkers are going to be very familiar with. Our whiskey here is eight years old, and apparently they combined what they call two parcels of Scottish barley to put this stuff together. One of these parcels spent six years in ex-American oak casks and then two years in our red wine casks, the other seven years in the American oak casks and then one year in the red wine casks, and apparently our whiskey is made entirely using concerto barley, so there's some fun technical knowledge for us nerds. And our cask exploration series is actually pretty cool. It's unsurprisingly an exploration of casks, uh, they put them out of cast strength, they give us the vintage, and the casts they use are not kept secret. They tell us exactly what they use, exactly how they put the whiskey together. So as always, great transparency from Port Charlotte. And on a more personal note, I just think these guys are some of the coolest whiskey makers in town. It's not just because of the transparency, but also because of the craft presentation, the quality, the attention to detail, and their willingness to experiment. It really feels like it's whiskey for whiskey people, by whiskey people, because we're special. Now this is one of Isla's more premium priced distilleries and of course people do complain about that and of course even I wish they were cheaper. To be fair I wish that about every whiskey but no this is one of those scenarios where I really feel like you get what you pay for. Like these guys do not make low effort whiskey. Anyway swing back around to this one. Um, yeah red wine casks. Red wine can be very hit or miss for me. Of course there are some beautiful red wine matured or finished whiskeys out there but they tend to be few or far between in my opinion but you know what if anyone can pull it off it's probably these guys so yeah let's jump into our review see what the whiskey is all about and in the meantime if you could kindly leave a like down below that'd be greatly appreciated so our whiskey here is a healthy 56.1 percent abv these guys do not chill filter and they do not color So I've talked about these bottles before when I reviewed the tin and the Isle of Barley. I think these are some of the coolest whiskey bottles in the game. I love the dark color scheme. I love the apothecary look it's got going. Presentation is stunning. It's an easy five out of five for me. Nothing about non-chill filtered or no color added on our bottle here. We have to look to the tin and broadly speaking, there's actually not much on this bottle. Almost everything in terms of information is on the tin over there. And yeah, a lot of it is markety stuff, but most of what they're saying is you know, talking about their commitment to craft, so I'm cool with that. So I did add water to this one. Let's try the nose. Very big, uh, very sweet up front. Loads of vanilla and sweet red fruits, sweet berries. Lots of peat, of course. We have some engine oil in here. We also have sweet red wine tannins in here, some cherries, some almonds, some tangerines, and some gentle oak spice. Let's try our palate. Mm. Ooh. Again, very sweet. It's viscous, it's mouth coating. Raspberries, vanilla, oak, um, virgin oak. We have some grilled meat sprinkled with salt and pepper. We have Montreal steak spice, we have cinnamon, we have some chili flakes in here, some earth, and some sweet barbecue sauce. And now we're finished. Mm. Okay, you know what? The finish is the best part here serious interplay between those fruits and those spices um raspberry thumbprint cookies grilled meats and those big bits of salt you sprinkle on your steak 
We've also got some hickory, some charcoal, some menthol, and some vanilla. Now there is a bit of a lingering metallic note here. Our finish is long. All right, so this is a really cool whiskey. And I often get barbecue sauce notes when you combine peat with like a sherry cask, or in this case, a wine cask. This one's no different. This whiskey takes me straight to the barbecue. We have those nice sweet saucy notes in there. And of course we have our grilled meats as well, as well as some meat spices. We've got salt and pepper in here. We've got Montreal steak spice. We've got chili flakes. We have cinnamon in here. Don't ever put cinnamon on your steak, but it's in here. Uh, we have charcoal in here and we have like those blackened bits of meat that stick to the grill when you're barbecuing. Really cool stuff. And it's actually a thick, slightly gamey steak that we've got here. There is a bit of that gamey metallic note in here, but not enough to detract from the whiskey. Uh, maybe something like a filet mignon. So you're having a filet mignon, nice glass of red wine beside it. And then for dessert, you're gonna have some raspberry thumbprint cookies. So we've got a treat yourself summer barbecue kind of vibe, which I'm all for. Uh, our flavors in here are big and bold, but they are harmonious. Like nothing really overwhelms anything else here. We have our big peat and we have that sort of very forward cask influence, but they come at us in equal measure. And even though the flavors are loud and in your face up front, they do settle into some nice complexity towards the finish. And really, I absolutely love this finish. It's a great finish. You know, you take your sip, you breathe out afterwards. You have a really nice interplay of flavors there. Now this stuff is pretty unique, it's pretty distinctive, so there's not a lot that we can compare it to, but if I were to compare it to anything, I'd probably compare it to the Ardbeg Oogadal. Of course, Ardbeg Oogie has its sherry influence, and we've got our wine influence here. Both of them are big, bold, cast strength peat monsters with some nice fruity flavors worked in. They both offer a nice balance between the distillate and those fruity flavors from the casks. Uh, this one is going to be a little bit sweeter and more fruit forward than the Ardbeg, and it's also better. Actually, the two whiskeys are quite different, but I guess my point is, is that if you like the Ardbeg Oogadal and what it does, then this one should be on your shopping list. Again, I like it a little bit more. We have more complexity here and a bit more of an interesting character. Now, even though this is one of the fruitier, sweeter Port Charlottes out there, we also still have the house style in full display here. And it's a house style that I love. It's helped along even more by the fact that it's 56.1%. But you know, even their standard releases all come out at 50%. So everything they put out has some heft to it, has some weight to it. And you know, very few brands are able to have the distillate and the casks work together in tandem this well, this consistently. And it's funny, I might not say the same thing for their unpeated line, the Brickladdy line, which for me is much more hit or miss, but that's neither here nor there. Listen, this whiskey is fantastic. I'm going to score it a 90 and obviously I'm going to recommend it to you guys. It's delicious stuff. So I think our value here is okay. It's definitely not a cheap whiskey. It's priced above your other stuff like Ardbeg Oogadal, for example, but I think that's justified. I think our quality justifies the higher price tag here. Um, that being said, I don't know that I'd want to pay much more than I did for it, but having spent the money, I think it's worth every penny. All right, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That's always appreciated, and I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our PAC01? What were your thoughts? Finally, down below in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.